on the, this is the last of the mathematical visual, visual videos. This is on grid conversion factors. Um, and this talks about the mathematical formula you would use to convert um, when you're going from either no grid to a grid or when you're changing between grid ratios. Now, uh, remember that a grid is placed between the patient and the image receptor. And the whole purpose of a grid is to absorb scatter radiation to keep it from striking the image receptor and creating uh, radiation fog on our image. There's nothing useful about scatter radiation. Um, it doesn't do anything to help our image. It only takes away from our image. So we utilize a grid to actually um, absorb the scatter radiation and raise the contrast or improve the contrast. So when we do that, what it actually does is causes us to um, get rid of some of the unwanted shades of gray so that we can clean up that scatter. But when cleaning up that scatter, what actually happens is the grid doesn't know the difference between a scattered photon and a transmitted photon. So sometimes it actually absorbs some of the transmitted photons. So when there's a loss in quantity of photons, we actually have to increase the mass as a whole to raise the quantity to compensate for that loss. So when we look at these conversion factors, these are our grid conversion factors. One, two, three, four, five, and six. These are our grid ratios. So you go from no grid, which would mean you're doing it tabletop, that gets a value of one. A five to one grid ratio is a two. Six to one is a three. Eight to one is a four. 10 and 12 to one gets a five. And 16 to one is a six. Now the significance about the 10 and 12 to one is that most wall buckies and table buckies are either 10 or 12 to one grid ratios. The lower the grid ratio, it means that there's lead, less lead content in there. So they clean up scatter, but not as well as a higher grid ratio. So when you're using tabletop, you don't need a grid. That's why it's the lowest grid conversion factor. But the higher up you go in grid ratio, not only is there more lead in the grid, but you also have to be more precise with your positioning, meaning that any angulation of the grid or misalignment of the grid in relation to the part or the photons can cause grid cutoff. So the higher the grid ratio, more lead content, and the more precise you have to be in your positioning. Okay. So when we look at this and we're looking at um, grid ratios and the changes that need to be made in those, pretty much what's going to happen is that you're going to go from whatever your grid conversion factor is. In the book, a lot of times it'll give you a much more drawn out formula, but I've actually given you this one, which is shorter because it eliminates one step. So let's say, um, let's give you a math problem. Let's say that um, you, did <clears throat> you did a knee um, tabletop and you used um, let's see, on your knee you used 75 kbp tabletop at 5 mass okay, at a 40 inch SID. Now some of these numbers don't matter to us, but let's say um, your knee was done tabletop and you used 75 kbp 5 mass at a 40 inch SID. And then the radiologist said that it looked pretty good, but he wanted you to go ahead and do it in the bucky. And in the room, your bucky was a 10 to 1 grid ratio. Now what would you use if it was a 10 to 1 grid ratio? Okay, so tabletop. You did it tabletop. That is your first grid conversion factor. And this one, um, that would be your GCF1 and tabletop gets a value of 1. When you do it in a 10 to 1 grid ratio, that's your second GCF factor, and that gets a value of 5. Okay, So the formula says your second GCF 
which would be five, over your first, which is a one, times your mass value, which is five. So five divided by one is five, times five would mean that when you put it in the bucky, you would use 25 mass. So you could go back and use 75 kvp, 25 mass, 40 inch SID, utilizing a 10 to 1 grid. Okay. So it just tells you the conversion you need to make when going from either no grid to a grid or changing between grid ratios. Let's try another one together. We'll just write this smaller over here so we have a little bit more room. So the formula is GCF2 over GCF1 times your mass value. Right. Let's say that you um, were in the department and you did an abdomen and you used 80 kvp at 12 mass and with that you had a 12 to 1 grid ratio okay that was in the department and then you had to go on portables and do that same patient because he wasn't able to come to you and this one was really good this was diagnostic but for the portable the only grid you have is a 5 to 1 grid so if you had a 5 to 1 grid what would you use? If we go through and label that, here we have our 12 mass, which is our mass value. We have a 12 to 1 grid, which is a grid conversion factor. This is the first one, and it's a 5. And the portable is a 5 to 1, so that's our second grid conversion factor. And that's a 2. Okay, so the formula says GCF2, which is 2, because it was a 5 to 1. So it's this. Over GCF1, which is a 12 to 1, so that's a 5. Times your mass value, which is 12. So 2 divided by 5 is 0.4 times 12 ends up being 4.8 mass. So on portables, you would do 80 kvp at 4.8 mass on a 5 to 1 grid. Okay, so the grid ratio went from 12 mass, which it was higher, down to a 5 to 1. So the, the mass value went lower, which makes sense because if you're having less lead content, less scatter absorption, more photons get through, so you don't need as much quantity. Okay, and that is the grid conversion formula. Again, this stands for grid conversion factor which is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And then these tabletop, 5 to 1 grid, 6 to 1, 8, 10, and 12 to 1, which are normally our wall buckies and our table buckies. And then a 16 to 1 grid is the highest grid ratio. Higher grid ratio, more lead, better at scatter cleanup, but you also have to be more precise in your positioning. Hopefully that makes um, the grid conversion formula make a little bit more sense. And if you have any questions or comments, I'm happy to answer those and try and clear that up. Thank you so much.